Hello, I'm Mike Gordon, and welcome back to my perfect playthrough of Pokemon Gold and Silver. Last time, we had uh, been in the Pokemon League, and though uh, we only caught a couple Pokemon the pre along the way, we also need- with- and we did all that with just our Mewtwo. We still have some phone numbers that we need to, uh... Oh, wait. So yeah, we're getting a call from Professor Elm telling us to stop by his lab sometime. So this episode is going to be all about me battling the fourth batch of rematch trainers. Because their teams, their second teams are about to disappear if we make too much for progress. So we want to get them all over and done with as quickly as possible. Which is quite the task, because these trainers are in the most out there- A lot of these trainers are in some of the most out there locations possible. Luckily, both Gold and Silver are gonna start off by battling a trainer that isn't so out of the way. And difficult to reach. In, a uh, Bird Keeper Vance. On Route 44. No random encounters, no nothing. So I'm just gonna go use Thunder Punch to ensure the one shot. And you can notice that gold is noticeably ahead of silver. But don't worry, that those numbers are gonna plateau soon enough. Anyways, we're just gonna keep on going, keep on trucking. For the next hour, battling every trainer and then deleting their phone numbers as the time went over the time comes. Hi, welcome. You're trying to. Yeah, I'm just. And I'm just gonna keep using the Daylight Savings trick. In order to trigger these encounters. And honestly, there's no unique dialogue, there's no. There are no new captures, no Pokedex entries to read. Pretty much the only thing I'm doing this entire episode is battling a bunch of second teams. All the third teams will remain fixed all the way up till the very end of the game, so that's why I'm battling these trainers now, because they're all missable. Now when the time comes in Pokemon Crystal, none of the rematch battles are missable. And therefore, I can save them till the very end of the uh, perfect playthrough. That's also what I'm gonna do in Gold and Silver too, is that I'm gonna take care of all the rematch trainers Pretty much at the very, the third teams at the very end of the game when I've accomplished everything else. In Crystal, I'm gonna do all the rematches in one go. So in Gold version, I figure I could just shortcut my way to all these trainers through Victory Road. Since, uh, that was the phone call I got second after Bird Keeper Vance and Cold. In Crystal, in, I mean Silver, my second team was actually, second, uh, rematch was actually against, uh, Fisherman Wilt. Fisher Wilton, who isn't out of the way. Furthermore, I need to nab the phone numbers from routes 27 and 26 I, uh, that I skipped out on. The 
this and so they turn out to work out well for me in the end because I actually forgot that I never deleted uh Sailor Huey's number the last time I played Silver version. So yeah, I'm basically battling all the easier to reach trainers first in silver version. That's just the way the cookie crumbles. Whereas gold is battling all the the trainers in whatever or that I landed it on. So I need to retrieve Cool Trainer Beth's number because I actually forgot to get hers in both games. But again, this worked out well for me in Silver because I forgot to delete uh, Sailor Huey's number. But now we're taking on the Route 45 46 rematch trainers. And before I return to New Barktown. I'm going to seek out the last phone number that I still need to get. I do things like this in different orders because I'm trying to see which route would be faster. And I have yet to experiment on Silver Side because I'm just rematching the same troop of trainers that are easier to reach. First, anyways. And now we got to get this guy's number, Bird Keeper Jose's. The last phone number in the game. Well, technically, that would be Cool Trainer Beth, but schematics. Using teleport to land at a Poke a Johto Pokemon Center because even though we start off at New Bark Town, entering our house or Professor Elm's laboratory does nothing to reset the teleport uh, spot. You will only ever teleport at a Pokemon Center. So Hiker Perry is next. For gold and for silver, I forgot who I bow. I'm set to bow next. And as per usual, I play gold first and then silver. And yeah, that's just. Alright, it's Black Belt Kenji. Yeah, I don't really have a lot to say because all these t all these rematch teams are way, way weaker than than Mewtwo. It is free experience for Mewtwo, I'll i I'll say that much. Damn. I'm gonna just use fly to teleport back to return to the to mom's house. Do the reset, rinse, repeat. This is probably the most boring episode of the entire playthrough. Because it's basically just me battling a bunch of trainers that are way weaker than Mewtwo. But I promise you, next episode, I'm gonna pick up the slack in, all, in both games.
Though both games will be doing things in a slightly different order. And the reason for this is to prevent overlapping between the two games. Alright, and just do what you can. So while uh, Gold Balling Fisher Wilson, we have gotten our first rematch from Route 27. And we need a surf to a bit into Kanto. And by the way, because it was Route 27, I actually decided, realized, okay, if I cut through Tojo Falls, I could get to Cool Trainer uh, Gina and Bird Keeper jo Jose a lot faster than if I were to get there from, thick, from Indigo Plateau. Even though there are a lot of surf tiles I'd have to go through, versus if I just went there from Victory Road. There'd also be fewer encounter spawns. Oh god damn it. You can get into encounters on a waterfall? Are you serious? Like going down a waterfall. Alright, uh, Picnicker Aaron, which is Route 46, which we, of course, we'd have to access from Route 40, from Blackthorn City, because it's all ledges. I would have had to go fetch one of the phone number missing phone numbers anyways because in both gold and silver my phone number my uh pokey gear would be maxed out on phone numbers. Man will it be so much more fun to try to chase these guys down after a run like this. So yeah, we are battling Picnicker Aaron, who uses a bunch of Ponyta. Now they're in their 30s instead of their teens, like last time. And honestly, consider the fact that the trainers are out 26 and 27 are just a couple levels higher and are otherwise identical in every way. I have no idea why their phone number, why their trainers asking to give out their phone numbers this late in the game anyways, especially especially since there are no trainers and no other Cantonian trainers will give out their phone numbers in Generation 2. This is different in Generation 4 where a ton of trainers will offer up their phone numbers and you can hold, and you can completely book out your fo your uh, phone book as well. So I need to get Jose's phone number, and Jose's probably the trickiest one to get a rematch from because a lot of his phone calls are completely bogus, wrong numbers. So, right from the start, you have to determine if this is a phone number directed at you or to somebody else instead. Which is kind of funny because Jose is probably the most out of the way trainer to get their number that you can get their number from. Bunch of random encounters in 
from Victory Road, because of course I am. And now Silver is getting to an encounter with Hiker Perry. Since I'm get arriving here, and Gold gets to rematch Cool Trainer Beth. And yeah, we are just gonna keep spamming attacks. If Gold, I wasn't certain if Shadow Ball or Thunder Punch could one-shot Rapidash, but spoiler alert, yes it can. Rapidash is not an especially bulky Pokemon. Teleport, so gold has just two more rematches left to go through. And meanwhile, Silver is dealing with Hiker Perry. And now there's Cool Train Arena. Who we can fight on Route 26. I'm not even deleting their phone number so I don't get calls from them again. Wanna use waterfall? Oops. And now there's a phone number from Jose, and it's actually the one that he intend- And this is actually the intended number where he'll rematch you. Not a wrong, not a bogus wrong number. Always safely, and I'm just going to go ahead and. Get the and I'm just gonna go ahead and cut through to Tojo Hall Falls in Norwich. Jose and Gina. Yeah, I think her name's G. Uh, the other G one is Gavin. And the other female's Beth. And a queen, of course. And that twenty one A two. And Silver Scud gets rematch with Jose. At least I got the phone number from Jose in gold version already. But yeah, Jose and Kenji are the last two trainers for gold of battle silver after this. I forgot who's left. It's not Gavin because I already got. Uh, at least I don't think so. And now Gold has gotten the right number from Jose, which means we can challenge him to a rematch.
I think the last couple trainers are Gavin and Beth in a silver version because I never got Beth's number. Basically, stupid encamp random encounters. Gotta keep running away from these battles. Angle, but man, we're just getting bombarded with random encounters that we don't need because we have caught we caught everything in these locations. We have Dodo, we have Dodrio, we have Ponyta, and we have Rhyhorn. There are no new captures in this episode. So now is when Silver gets Beth's phone number. This is when Gold and Silver about rematch their second trainers. Those being Jose and Gavin, respectively. They both games only have one more trainer left to rematch. In Gold's case, it's Black Belt Kenji on Route 45. In Silver's case, it's the recently acquired Beth from Route 27. Teleport back to Olivine City Pokemon Center, and there's a reason why I chose Olivine City for my teleport spawn. That is because this is the episode where we board the SS Aqua and arrive at at uh, Kanto proper. One trainer apiece. And those and they're fairly easy to manip. There's no wrong no instances of a wrong number in this episode. But here's Kenji. We actually got there with very little of any encounters. Let's see if Silver can match that in, in Route 2. Cool trainer Beth, who thankfully is just outside Victory Road. I doubt it, but let's see. As you can see, gold has such a commanding lead over silver that's ridiculous. Not choke. Sure. 
Okay, yep. That should do it in gold version. And silver version is just about right to catch up to gold. That was bad. Uh, people will not, they, the trainers will not call you if they're, if you're in the same location they are. So, yep, yeah, that's all the second team trainers for us to rematch in this current batch. We, however, we still have their third team rematches to contend with, but we can do this, uh, but we can worry about that later. Soon, please get on board. And we're gonna go ahead about every single trainer on board the SS Aqua. And Silver is now a mere couple seconds behind Gold. And from there on, Silver's gonna just pull ahead of Gold version in terms of time. So it's kind of amazing just how quickly I was able to catch up in both gold and, and silver version. Punch on Scene Slash, while well, Mewtwo's gonna go with Thunder Punch on Matchup. That's interesting. Well, there's a reason for that. It's because these trainers. It's to avoid A, super effective techs, and B, a lot of their moves like Ice Punch and Psychic are a little bit on the long side in terms of frames. So now so so now gold is a now has retaken the lead from silver, but not for very long. As we go Thunder Punch on that shop. Followed by Ice Followed by Thunder Punch on Psyduck and Ice Punch on Sand Slash. Psychic on Machoke. And of course, we to use his Ice Punch on Golem. So, yeah, in this episode where we're just re battling a bunch of trainers, we do make four progress because we're also gonna try battling all the trainers on board the SS Aqua. And now it's Silver's turn who's clearly taking the lead over Gold. Uh, at this point, I'm no longer using safe states because using safe states to mark my progress because this is all pretty much automatic all the way till near the end. Shadow Ball. Uh, 
And, uh, yeah. You two use, use Psychic. And, yeah. Chuck or Fritz was defeated. I can't move anymore. If it beats a bell when I'm off on break. So, yeah, this trainer uses two rad cakes. And, uh, ooh. You two got hit with quick attack. Maybe this will be the opportunity gold needs to catch back up again. Alright, that's one Thunder Pump spell quick attack. And now we're beginning the second Radicate fight. Oh, no. And, uh, it's about even Stevens between the two games. Picnicker who just uses a sea king. And yeah, that's basically it. What else do we have to say? Because these battles pretty much play out the exact same way. And that's that's a one shot. Here's a one shot. Another one. Oh, another one shot. Oh, another one shot. That's basically how this entire episode plays out. So this is actually where we obtain the metal coat, which is gonna be important for evolving for duping and evolving Scyther and Onyx into Scizor and Steelix later on. So... Go hmm. oh, me too. twins and as I said the twins in Gen 2 work a little differently from future generations. In Gen 2 the twin you speak to first is the one whose poke will determine which Pokemon they send out first. With this with the left twin sending out Tayursa followed by Fampi, while the right twin sends it will send out Fan will start with Fampi and then send out Tayursa. The concept of double bells had not been implemented yet. Alright, I'm skipping this all the way to this cabin because there are no trainers in the third in the third cabin. I just had to look at a map. And unfortunately this map only keeps track of the train during your the initial departure not the not during the any of the subsequent trips oh yeah today is a uh, Sunday in universe which means we are going to which means shortly after running a couple errands on Vermilion City we are going to sail right back to Olivine power off and wait till, and wait till like midnight, 
and then sail back, but not before speaking to Monica Mondays and getting picking up our love ball and then dropping off our yellow apricorn. We want to take care of the Monday stuff in Johto first. And then we will take care of the camp, the Sunday and Monday stuff in Johto first, before taking care of the, uh... The rest of the stuff in Johto, in Kanto. So that was a mistake on my part. There was a hidden iron right there, which you can only access when disembarking SS Aqua from all of them. Only when you first arrive at Vermilion City. So pick up a hidden full heal here, and then we talk to this chairman here. He will give us a rare candy after we hear his weirdly sexual rant about his favorite Pokemon, Rapidash. There is no way this guy doesn't screw around with his Rapidash. And the craziest thing is that for some reason, the anime makes this creepy weirdo. into one of the contest judges in the anime. So now we are going to battle all the trainers in the SS Aqua now. And that's the rest of this episode. So silver silver's gonna fish ahead of gold, no matter what. <sighs> I don't know what else to talk about because we just have to pick up some hidden items as well as a gift rare candy from the chairman. Then we head back to Johto so we could bout all the trainers during the Vermilion to Olivine trip. Remember, this is a perfect, pl again, welcome to perfect playthroughs where our objective is to accomplish everything the game has to offer. And that means battling every single trainer and in in rematching all the updated teams in the game. There's no cutting corners in this. Whatever move happens to be more applicable. Burglar Gory was defeated. So what? 
So Mewtwo use Ice Punch. Says that right down. So yeah, I'm battling these trainers in slightly different orders. Just slightly. In actuality, gold is just trying to catch up to silver. Who actually neglected to rest his Mewtwo at the cabin when we first when we when we first arrived at Vermilion. Now in subsequent trips we have to rest at the cabin because the game won't let us proceed otherwise. Just, uh, this is so sad. It's not my fault these Pokemon are so goddamn weak. These trainers are so goddamn weak. But it is my fault because I'm using Mewtwo, who's literally 30 to 50 levels higher than every one of these trainers. Pokemon. Like, of course Mewtwo would have an easy Elite Four. Incidentally enough, I'm not gonna try playing like a pussy in Pokemon Crystal because I'm still sticking with Tyranitar. In fact, I hadn't. One of the reasons why I stuck with decided to go with Mewtwo and Gold Silver is actually for more. It's really for uh, what, what's the term? What is the term, anyways? It's not arbitrary reasons. Arbitrary. I forgot the term. Pragmatic reasons. That's what I was looking for. Because in Pokemon Crystal, I had to accomplish a lot more before I was ready to trade with Pokemon Yellow. I had to get a lot more done before Yellow was. I was ready to trade with Yellow. Furthermore, there was a level 40 Larvitar that's just out in the open, ready for somebody to grab it and add it to their team. Whereas in Pokemon Silver, that's not really the case. Whereas in Gold and Silver, that's not really the case. Larvitar cannot be obtained prior to Mount Silver, the final dungeon. Which is right next to the final battle. And oh. And an aura cut down on unnecessary uh, safe, use of safe states. So, really only in use when you're trying to rematch trainers. So really only in use when you're trying to rematch certain trainers, or when you're trying to 
Sweet set me up a certain encounter. Trainers use so many copies of the same Pokemon for no reason. It's ridiculous. And there we go. Thunder Punch, Thunder Punch, Thunder Punch. we have the Centric Trainer that we also have to ba do battle with. Alright. Mewtwo's gonna go Thunder Punch. So fight! Oh man. This is so boring! Yeah, this is done all for pragmatic reasons. It's to cut down on save states and to speed these two playthroughs up a lot. That's the only reason why I'm soloing the rest of the, these two games with you two. It's purely for pragmatic reasons. Nothing else. Fainted. And we're just gonna go ahead and thunder punch the crap out of this Pokemon. Songs for Golden Rod Radio Town. Great. Cool. That was our first spell. Gets a guitarist, and that's all the trainers on this trip, but they bore the SS Aqua. Right now, I'm just. Right now, all Silver has to do in the meanwhile is swap out some items. Like. Drop these off and deposit them, and in exchange, we're gonna pick up the yellow apricorn. And of course, we're gonna move our Pokemon around a bit in our PC box. Rhyhorn will go here between Weezing and Dawn, the Drydon. Doduo and Dodrio will go right here between Farfetch and Shelter. And lastly, Ponyto will be near the end of this box between Golem and Slowpoke. I power off because I need to wait till midnight with the shifting to with the shifting day, time of day. Now I get a rest at the inn. Now we've arrived at Olivine City. The gold does things a bit differently, and of course there's a hidden item for us to pick up right over here. Protein. And I'm not gonna swap out items in my in my item box in gold version yet because I didn't think to do that at the time, A. And B, I... Because I played gold first and then silver.
So, and now Gold's done swapping Pokemon, so he powers off. So we're just heading down to collect the Love Ball and drop off the Yellow Apricorn. Uh, there is no GS Ball even in Gold Silver, so the, uh, the Elix Forest Shrine is just there for decoration. Does leave me wonder if the GS Ball event was planned for gold and silver at some point and ultimately became a crystal version exclusive event instead. Guess we'll never know because nobody knew about Celebi till way later. Heck, I didn't know that the GS Ball was supposed to contain Celebi in the anime till years later. Sort of became a, a forgot about MacGuffin in the anime. All because the, the anime, the show writers decided to use Celebi as the mask, as the main legendary in the fourth movie. And we also explain why Johto had so much filler. It was ridiculous. Granted, a couple of it was. A bit of it was funny. Like watching James dressing up like a chicken. Going insane and dressing up like a chicken. That was funny. Yeah, I know, it was technically a Moltres costume, but... I digress, there was just so much filler. that Kevin. So now that's Monday, we talked to Monica Monday and we we got our love ball and we dropped off our yellow apricorn. We can now sail back to Vermilion City. Cause of course we can do that. So, Mewtwo is so far ahead of everyone else. So, we're gonna battle this gentleman, and something about gentlemen is that they... Is that they have a ton of Pokemon. Is that they give out a ton of gil when you beat them. Of course, by this point in the game, the differences are rather negligible. So, yep. Yeah. Oh, there's nobody here in this cabin. We're gonna go about the female cool trainer first, and then we're gonna take on the male cool trainer. This does come with the illusion of making you think that Gold I caught with silver, but he didn't. Silver's actually quite a ways ahead of gold, to the point that, yes, gold will have a 0% chance of catching up to silver, no matter how long I wait. It's kind of funny how li these little things ultimately led to Silver pulling away and never looking back. Even though Silver was actually behind Gold for much of this episode. Alright, now we are ready to take on... 
doesn't really matter anymore. This is so freaking boring. What's that nostalgia critic? What was that nostalgia critic thing from one of those from one of his old school reviews? That boring, 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 boring. All right. Yeah, yeah, I don't think anybody in their right mind is gonna say, Oh, this is one of the best episodes of Gold and Silver. I'd be shocked if I hit triple digit views on this video at any point in time. Well, it does seem that my, uh, perfect, that uh, my, uh, per Pokemon playthroughs definitely developed a bit of a cult following. A very, very small cult following, but a cult following nonetheless. Mewtwo, use Thunder Punch! For sure. Jonah... Sailor Garrett, alright. Are we almost done? We've gotta be. After this trip, round trip, on the SS Aqua, they're back and then there again. After this trip on the SS Ant, I'm going to end the episode. Because next time I do play, I promise you we will see some action. You will go around capturing a bunch of Pokemon and battling a bunch of trainers. I mean, we are going to see some action come hell or high water. For sure, Jonah was defeated. I'm not bored, I'm just drawn that way. I mean, is it me or is gold like? Three bows be sadly three bows behind silver. It's so jarring. It used to be oh silver's just behind by one bow, but now it seems like he's behind by like five. Gee, I hope I didn't forget any bows in silver version. But no, he's just behind by one. It's just that Silver is just in a whole other room now. Two. And there's really no going around this. Magnemite is... Magnemite is steel... is... Steel electric, which means all of my moves are gonna be not very effective. But at least this way, I know that I can one shot Magnum. I'm 50 levels higher than Magnemite, so I should have no problems one shotting. It's not very effective. And I'm gonna go ahead with my, uh, With my psychics. However, I'm not doing myself much favors by spamming psychic because that's the long the move with the longest animation. And now make that two trainers behind. There's nobody down here. So yeah, I think safe to say Silver's gonna finish this episode way ahead of gold.
by at least a couple minutes, which is quite a wa ways, by the way. So I'm just gonna spam Shadow Ball because these Pokemon are that weak. So, Met Shadow Ball. So I'm about and a half up behind the uh, silver version. Look, I see that silver's the more cleaned up run compared to gold, which goes with the territory because I played gold first and then silver. We're past the one hour mark, which is quite long for a joint coverage. It's literally two out over two hours of footage. And uh, gold has two more cabins after this, and silver's done. Though strangely enough, silver has just about done, I would say. Though strangely enough, yeah, silver's done. Though, strangely enough... I don't remember what I was gonna say. Yeah, I forgot what I was gonna say. What was it? That doesn't matter. Because Silver is about to wrap up his episode, making this a solo gold playthrough. For the rest of this episode. I'm actually gonna save my game just in front of the exit to the end, the ex to the town exit. It's 12, 13, midnight. We have eight badges, and before we about take on any of the gym leaders, we're actually gonna scour the entire region, battling every single trainer, and capturing every single Pokemon. And oh yeah, we need to complete a certain quest line to make sure we unlock the entirety of Kanto. So all that ne will be uh, next time. About a minute and a half. Gold is a minute and a half behind silver. Jesus. Those are the territory since I make the same mistake in both gold and silver version at the end, so I literally save zero time. And then I decide to use this opportunity to deposit the protein. And sharp beat guy acquired. And of course we're gonna heal rust up at the at our in our cabin. And we will arrive at Vermilion. Still midnight. So that's basically it. We are going to head off to Ver right to the same exact spot that we ended off Silver. Next time we are going to scour the region, capturing as much Pokemon as possible, defeating as many trainers as possible. And we are in, who knows, maybe we'll begin the main quest line. So leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. I greatly appreciate it. With all that out of the way, this is Mike Gorn, sign out.